Wayne was a very close friend of Roger's, and uh, in fact, Roger is now after uh, well his uh, his uh, archives and so forth to Wayne, and Wayne and I are working to the Library of Congress to see if uh, they're very anxious to acquire those. And so <clears throat> there is a large uh, uh, archive being developed at the Library of Congress related to the origins of GIS and the development of GIS throughout the 20th century. Uh, so I think it's appropriate if we could you know, integrate those really core aspects of that archive uh, here at the Library of Congress and well, not here at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. So we're working on that. And, uh, but the Dwayne asked uh, that in his absence, uh, could he submit something? And he asked if I could read that for him. So I'm going to begin uh, with this and then a very short uh, piece from uh, Jack Daniel. And then we'll go on to talks from uh, other co-sponsors of this uh, tribute, which is sponsored by AG and uh, UCGIS and CAGES. Um, <clears throat> from Dwayne Marble. If my old friend Roger were here, he would most likely be muttering in my ear about either the absence of wine or if wine was being served, its quality. <laughs> Roger enjoyed the many good things in life. One of the things Roger enjoyed was flying. <clears throat> Before moving from England to Canada, Roger served for three years as a pilot and flying officer in the Royal Air Force. He left the RAF when he could no longer fly fighters with the newly installed injection seats because he was so tall and the fighter's cockpit was so small that ejection would have left his legs behind. One day, some years ago, Roger and I, this is a uh, Wayne. Uh, Roger and Wayne were engaged in field work in the northern Napa Valley of California. <laughs> While eating lunch at Calistoga, we looked out the window and saw an aircraft towing a glider aloft. After lunch and at Roger's insistence, we found the airport and before long, Roger had arranged for a flight in a two-place training glider. He did not fit into the glider any better than he did into the RAF, RAF fighter, but off he went. He returned an hour later and talked about little other than his glider flight despite the rest of the day. I first met Roger in the 1960s when I was teaching geography at Northwestern University. Roger came to Evanston to par participate in Dr. Edward uh, Baker uh, Horwood's extensive traveling seminar on computer analysis and mapping of the U.S. Census data. It was very early days with respect to what was to become the Canada Geographic Information System, and Roger and Walter, Waldo Tobler and I had a long, in-depth discussion of Roger's ideas. Roger was very pleased when Waldo and I agreed that his vision was a viable one, providing that what was, to Waldo and me, a very extensive amount of time and money. This meeting was the beginning of a long, deep, personal and professional relationship with Roger that extended over half a century. Following his work at the CGIS, Roger spent several years completing a PhD in geography at University College London. As was usual with Mark Roger, during his years at CGIS and those spent doing his PhD work, he juggled a number of other activities. I feel that the most important of these was his very active work as chair of the IGA Commission on Geographical Data Sensing and Processing. His 12 years of IGU work successfully extended the then growing North American focus on computational geography and GIS so as to engage the attention and participation of research in Asia, Australia, Europe, and the Soviet Union. Roger frequently is thought of only within the context of the Canadian Geographic Information System and as a high level consultant to government and industry. This leaves out what I feel is Roger's most important contribution to GIS technology. That is Roger's development and effective use of a structured design approach to the creation and efficient operation of GIS installations. Roger was strong on lessons learned from experience, and so his GIS design model evolved as these lessons were incorporated. Much of what Roger developed in the GIS design area and used in his consulting business is summarized in his book, Thinking About GIS, colon, Geographic Information Planning for Managers. From Esri Press, 2013. Did Roger and I agree on everything? Of course not. 
and occasionally our disagreements could reach a rather noisy stage. One night when Roger was staying with us, we had a long evening discussion. At one point, Roger was pounding his glass on the table and was shouting so loudly that my wife, Jackie, thought it was going to turn into a fight. <laughs> then relative silence fell and she came into the room wondering what had happened. When she asked us, Roger calmly said, oh, we stopped talking about that and went on to another topic. <laughs> These exchanges with Roger, only infrequently noisy ones, were often fun and more often than not enlightening to both of us. When he died, Roger left me with the task of handling the disposition of his extensive collection of material dealing with the early days of GIS. These items represent, in my opinion, a treasure trove for the future. GIS historians and Roger's wife, Lila, and I hope, them, hope to have them ultimately reside in the Library of Congress. When I asked Lila for an estimate of how much material Roger had in their Ottawa home, she mentioned 80 shelf feet of books and reports Oh, and then there were those boxes in the basement. <laughs> Getting things organized may take a little while. I knew and worked with Roger Tomlinson for a bit more than half a century. He was a beloved friend and a treasured colleague. I miss him endlessly. Like way more.